Clarity presents, this is your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society representative in your community. It's just as important to consult a professional man when you need advice on future financial security for your wife and children. And there is just the man for you, no farther away than your telephone. He's your local representative of the Equitable Society. You'll find him friendly, helpful, and he knows the answers. In about 14 minutes, I'd like to tell you more about your Equitable representative and how he may be able to help you, as he has helped so many others, find future security with membership in the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Escape. It's titled, The Swamp Killer. The psychology of the criminal is the psychology of the hunted. Inevitably, pursuit follows crime. Inevitably, the lawbreaker's first reaction is to run, to hide, to find safe haven from the systematic, scientific hunting of law enforcement officers. Get away and hide out are so integral to criminal thinking and jargon that they have become part of the American language. Sometimes, as the cougar seeks his lair, the fugitive retires to a carefully prepared and well-secreted destination. Again, like a panicky stag, he may run without plan or procedure. Or, as in the case you are about to hear, he may attempt to elude his pursuers like the swamp fox by disappearing into little-known and difficult terrain. Wherever he runs, however distant or dangerous the trail, it is the job of your FBI to follow him. Flush him into the open and bring him back to justice and to the legal retribution of society. Tonight's FBI file begins deep in the Florida Everglades. Two men pole a shallow canoe through the brackish swamp water between the black arch of the mangrove roots. Between them sits a red-haired girl who listens tensely to the strange sounds of the swamp. Now I know why they say crazy as a loon. Even a bird would have to be nuts to live in a place like this. And what would you call a man who picks it for a honeymoon? I'd call him nice. Well, I'll admit it's not much of a spot. It's like it's perfect. And this is a perfect honeymoon. You know, Tracy, I'm not at all sure I approve of marriage for historians. Oh? All day when I was supposed to be looking at historic landmarks, I kept looking at you instead. <laughs> you just think about your book. That's important. Oh, if anyone reads it. Well, of course they will. I see you a chief of the Seminoles. One of the greatest military geniuses of all time. He was, wasn't he? Right. Poor guy, we've named three counties and nearly 20 towns after him, but he hardly rates a line in the history books. In other people's history books, yours is going to be different. I hope so. Professor? Yeah? Your grandfather served with Osceola, didn't he? He was there, Professor. Yes. Did he remember much about it, Colossa? That he was afraid. That he wanted to run away. But he didn't. When you have come to swamp, there is an end of running. Past this place... Only death lived. That's how Osceola's village got its name. Chapiofi. Meaning what? In my language, that is last birth of earth. Here we are. 
Janet. Uh, thanks. Another night, another 15 mosquito bites. What's that? Sounds like... Come on. Hey. Uh, uh, soldier. What happened, soldier? <laughs> Snake. I came off one of them trees. I kept walking as long as I could. Water moxin? Yeah. Yeah, you know what to do? Yeah. Come on, so bring uh, a razor blade and place a light a fire and get some water going. Right. Oh. All right, take it easy. Oh. A razor, Professor. Thanks. Mm. How long ago were you bitten? Uh, uh, 30 minutes, maybe an hour. I don't know for sure. Uh-huh. Shot, Willie. Yeah, I think it'd be all right. Uh-huh. Now, this is going to hurt. It's going to hurt plenty. I can take it. A few minutes later, at an army camp near a southern coastal city, Special Agent Jim Taylor of the FBI enters the office of Major John D. Logan, Corps of Military Police, the Camp Provo Marshal. Yeah? Special Agent Taylor, FBI. Oh, sure, Taylor. Your SAC said you'd be down. Good to see you again. Thank you, sir. What have we got, Major? A deserter? Yeah, a prisoner broke out of the stockade this morning, clubbed a guard, took his gun and uniform. Wanted to get off the post? Yep. Commandeered a jeep and ran the gate. Have enough gas to go very far? Report came in that he stopped at the filling station just over the state line, filled the tank and the auxiliary cans, then slugged the attendant and cleaned the cash drawer. Sounds like a tough customer. How was he in the stockade for? Charged with assaulting an officer. Being held for general court martial. Mm. Got any uh, personal data on him? Yeah. Name is Charles Becker, private. Listed about two months ago. Gave his home address as Dry Flats, Utah. Uh, he's a long way from home base. Mm, sure is. Here's his ID card. Fingerprints. Thanks. Mm. Six, two, hundred and eight. Big guy, huh? Yeah, the type who thinks with his fists. Oh, that's right. I'll tell it to the Salt Lake Field Office. They may pick up something in his hometown. You think you'd head for that? Uh, it's pretty far out, but it's a possibility. Meanwhile, I'll get on a three-state alarm. Oh, do you, you have the number on that Jeep? Yeah, I can get it from the motor pool. Fine. Well, we'll have the highways checked both north and southbound. Southbound? Where would he go? Oh, into the swamp country, maybe. Mm. Could be a good place for a man to hide a tad. Could be, if he lives through it. Here, uh, drink this. Thanks. Uh, that helps. Thanks, Professor. Forget it. Coffee, dear? Uh, no, thanks. I didn't know the army was operating near here. You are maneuvers? Kind of. You might say it's a secret project. Uh-huh. Well, if you've no objections, it's been a long day, and my wife and I would like Professor, to... Professor, nobody's going anyplace. He has a gun. Yeah. That tent. You got any firearms in there? Carbine? You. Big chief. That carbine. Get it. Better do as he says, Kawasa. Yes, sir. Yeah, no engine tricks. Chuck, he's not a soldier. That's what I tried to tell the MPs. You a deserter? No, I, I just got tired of being shoved around, that's all. I couldn't take it, see? Okay, Chief, hand that gun over. Here. Don't float very good, does it? What do you want with us? Way to get out of this dump. How'd you get in? You got a boat around here someplace, ain't you? Well, I don't think you'd be very good at paddling. You mean all you got's a canoe? That's right. I don't believe it. All that gear in one canoe, it don't add up. 
When's your boat due, Professor? Big Chief, when's the boat coming? Answer me. There's an airboat coming in the morning. Oh. Well, so I'm stuck with you for the night. Go on to sleep. All of you go to sleep. I'll keep the fire going. I'm going to sit up for a while. i got to think. Yeah. And no tricks. You know what, Professor? I can stay up three days and three nights without sleeping. I've done it lots of times. So no tricks. Sound off. Well? Okay, let's keep it this way. Nice and quiet. your office, you're down here at the arsenal. Show up anything on Becker? No, like so far. What about the jeep? Still unreported. Well, we may have taken it cross country. Air Force is lending us a couple of helicopters. We can try and pick up a trail that way. Fine. I hope it works. Now, I've got the uh, cenotaph report here from the Salt Lake Field Office. It seems friend Becker was quite character in dry flats. Is that a police record? I don't think serious, just drunk and disorderly, simple assault, but he was known as a pretty rough customer. The so way he shaped up here, too. Got into a fight at a roadhouse, half killed a man, cleared out of town after then. I guess that's when he joined up. Any family or close friends? No, he's a loner. Just drifted into town, drifted out mm. of What's that? Well, just a body, did a lot of hunting. He's known as a crack shot. Then he's armed. Sweet fellow to meet up with on a dark night. Yeah. Sweet like a water moccasin. <laughs> Just like the balloon. 
Just a moment, we'll hear the dramatic conclusion of tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Did you ever stop to realize that your social security may not mean full security for yourself and your loved ones? That's why I'd like to have you meet Mr. Calvin Kaufman, a member of the Equitable Society. Mr. Kaufman, I wonder if you'd tell us how you solved your problem of full security. I'd be glad to. Now, I have social security, but if something happened to me... It would only provide about $115 a month to my wife and children. Well, that's not enough. But then I heard you talking about a chart that would help me figure out how much they would need to keep them in comfort. And that must be the famous equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Incidentally, that chart is free. Well, I called our local equitable society man, and he brought the chart over. I figured out exactly what additional income I'd need to keep my wife and youngsters well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed, until my youngest got through high school. And I discovered that with my Social Security and the life insurance I already own, all I needed was a small additional amount of insurance. I certainly sleep a lot easier at night since I signed up for the Equitable Family Security Plan. And I want to advise any man who has Social Security to call up his own local Equitable man. Very good advice. Call your local Equitable representative. He'll be glad to bring you the Equitable Fact-Finding Chart for Fathers and Mothers. You'll find your local equitable man a good man to do business with. He'll show you how to get the most out of your insurance dollar, whether you're interested in security for your family, ownership of your home, independence after 60, or education for your children. Simply consult the yellow pages of your local telephone directory for the name of your local equitable representative. He's listed under equitable. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to the FBI file, The Swamp Killer. Whether he knows it or not, there is one law which even the most hardened criminal always obeys. The law of cause and effect. Data in the files of your FBI show that the commission of a single felonious act almost invariably is the cause of new crimes, frequently more serious than the original offense. Thus, the criminal in tonight's case began with a violation of the Articles of War, compounded the felony by becoming a fugitive from prosecution, then in swift succession piled on assault with a deadly weapon, kidnapping, murder. When captured this so-called tough guy whined that he'd had to do it, that he'd had no choice. This man and others like him forget that every man has the God-given right to choose between reason and violence, between law and crime, between good and evil. Brick Becker had a choice, all right, but he made the wrong one. Tonight's FBI file continues at field headquarters in the Metropolitan Center near the Army Post at which Brick Becker had been stationed. Special Agent Jim Taylor is making a phone call. Thomas Marshall's office, Major Logan. Hello, Major. Jim Taylor. Oh, how are you, Jim? What's up? I got some news on the Becker case. Sounds pretty promising. Oh? Uh-huh. A uh, maintenance engineer on one of the Everglades Canal projects reports spotting a jeep half submerged in the swamp. What about? Half of a back road at the edge of the Savannah country. The numbers check? Well, we can't tell. They hoist it out. It's in too deep. You want me to get some army equipment? Uh, no, thanks, Major. The Canal Authority already volunteered cooperation. Wow. Well, I'm taking a helicopter on down. Take a look at it just in case. You'd like to come along? Would it be of any use to you? Well, you might speed up identification. All right. When do we leave? Well, let's see, about, uh, oh, 30 minutes? Okay, I'll meet you at the airport. All right, so you then. All right. 
night, so I blew. We'll figure out something I ain't through yet. Aren't you? Oh. Oh, I gotta think. I gotta make plans. Okay, so I can't get out of this swamp. What do I do, then? You, Big Chief. Must be someplace around here I can hide out. Someplace dry, plenty of grub. Old Indian village, maybe. How about it, Chief? You know a village? I know. Okay, let's get going. Where? That's his business. He's a guide, ain't he? He's our guide, yes. All right, on your feet, engine. What's the matter with him, Professor? Don't he understand about guns? Of course I understand. And you ain't afraid? It is a man with gun who is afraid. Let's take him where he wants to go, Kawasa. He won't hold up much longer. Don't count on it, Professor. Come on, let's go. He might go. Uh, nothing very close. Except this old deserted Seminole village. Some professor set up camp there. Uh, anybody checked with him? No. One of Tiga's airport, the airboat went past on the canal this morning carrying supplies for him. Where's this Ortega now? It's me. And I should have been back an hour ago. Uh-huh. You think uh, we might buy one of your airboats, Mr. Simmons? Yeah, sure. You planning on going in after him? That's right. Yeah, this is the village, John. Okay. Looks deserted. Yeah. Except for that fellow on the bank. Hmm? Right over there, Major. Mortigo? Yeah, I guess so. Shot my head. Hmm. Wonder what happened to the boat. Looks like a bullet hole here. There's up the beggar, all right. Sure does. No sign of the rest of the party. Oh, he must have taken them with him. Not much chance of our picking up a trail in this place. Oh, I'm afraid not. Wait a minute, Major. Huh? Come here, take a look at this. That dead tree? Yeah. Here, take a look on the bark. Mm-hmm. Somebody's been whittling. Or oh, drawing with a sharp point of object. Where they won't help us find back of My... Hmm? Huh? Along the straight line, see? None of the symbols repeat. Symbols? You think it's sign language? Could be. The old seminars had a system like this. They'd carve messages in the mangrove bar. You think that the professor drew them? Yeah, maybe. Or the Indian guide. You remember any of the signs? A few. Major, let's try and figure this thing out. If we can read it, it may be as good as a road map. <laughs> Just one. Hey, sounds like a car. It is. 
This village is part of the Everglades National Park. The tourist road runs just on the outside there. Get down, all of you. Quiet. You're too late, Becker. I think you'll give me good now. Keep away from me, see? Now I'm going to... Now you're going to drop that gun, Becker. Huh? Drop it! I'm a special agent of the FBI. We're certainly glad to see you. I guess you found the symbols. That's right, Professor. Well, there's one you left out, though. A gallows. Becker was turned over to state authorities, was tried and found guilty of the murder of one. He received the death penalty. In the case you have just heard, your FBI's capture of the fugitive was materially speeded by the intelligent and courageous actions of his potential victims. However, their attempt to indicate the destination of the fugitive murderer would have been futile had it not been for the specialized knowledge and acute observation of detail exhibited by an agent of your FBI. The file on Charles Brick Becker is another of the long list of solved crimes resulting from the Bureau's outstanding policy of agent selection and training. Perhaps no greater tribute has been given these courageous and self-effacing law enforcement officers than that recently paid them by the director of the FBI, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover. I quote, FBI agents are gentlemen at all times, conducting themselves in a businesslike, respectful, and efficient manner. Their personal conduct is above reproach. Their character is impervious to the temptations of financial graft, inaccurate reporting, or deliberate omission of facts. They feel proud to be FBI agents, and wherever they may be, they form part of the great tradition of loyalty, integrity, and devotion to duty. Their objective is to obtain facts and facts only. Promotions depend exclusively on merit, not on political favoritism, the friends they know, or the amount of derogatory information they unearth. They are secure in their jobs, not afraid of outside intimidation, threats, or fears. They can, therefore, concentrate on their specific tasks, knowing they will not be undercut by political bickering, personal strife, or arbitrary changes of policy. Would you like to discover a sensible way to plan for the future financial security of your wife and children? Then call your local Equitable Society representative for your free copy of Equitable's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. He'll be glad to show you how simple it may be to give your family freedom from worry. Now, maybe you're interested in an independent, carefree life in your 60s, or a college education for your children. Then consult your local telephone directory for the name of your Equitable representative. You'll find his name listed in the yellow pages under Equitable, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, impersonation. Its title, The Baby Peddlers. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Robert Yale Libet. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Anthony Barrett, Walter Catlett, Whitfield Connor, Sam Edwards, Betty Lou Gerson, Bill Johnstone, and Tom Tully. This is your FBI, is the Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Baby Peddlers on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.